This is a breaking news broadcast from Mark's Group Broadcasting. I'm Emily Boyles. Montana Governor Steve Bullock circled through Colberts in Sydney and Glendive Thursday morning, offering $45 million in grant aid for infrastructure financed through the state bond proceeds, a loan interest reduction for local governments using the state revolving loan fund from 3% to 1.25%, and local access to expert technical assistance, dubbed rapid response teams, in the areas of land use planning, affordable housing, and grant application processing. A continuation of a project is started under the Schweitzer administration. All three parts of his proposal are in conjunction with his Main Street Montana plan. The interest rate reduction will go into effect immediately because of the needs of the community. However, it will be relatively short term until the legislature has the opportunity to approve or reject it as part of the overall package offered by the governor in the Eastern Montana Impact and Infrastructure Project. The $45 million grant program, however, is completely contingent on passage by the 2015 legislative session. If the governor is successful in passing the legislation, those funds could be used by local government for planning, design, repair, improvement, expansion, new construction, and payment of eligible existing debt incurred on or after July 1, 2011 for drinking water and wastewater treatment systems. The governor has also opened a state office of economic development closer to eastern Montana than Helena in Billings to help coordinate the needs of businesses and local government entities in the eastern part of the state. The governor's office distributed a statement from Bullock at the commencement of his tour. Now, the Bakken development is bringing jobs and economic opportunities, but it's also posing challenges to local communities that, that they couldn't have even imagined even a decade ago. Soaring prices, inadequate infrastructure, and a massive influx of new residents, it's really vexing local governments like never before. Some of those challenges require solutions that can be handled at the local level, but many of them require help and resources from the state. As governor, I'm committed to helping impacted communities confront and deal with these challenges. During the 2013 legislative session, Bullock proposed a similar bonding measure that would have made investments into eastern Montana infrastructure, but that measure was rejected by the legislature in favor of a smaller measure, which passed but later was vetoed by Governor Bullock. Following the conclusion of the 2013 session, Bullock says he was faced with the need to veto the $150 million worth of spending passed by the legislature in order to balance the state budget. House Bill 218 was part of that process. Process. He commented, quote, the legislature and I agree on the need to address the issues created by burgeoning growth in the Bakken. This project brings much needed assistance to local communities and does so in a fiscally responsible manner, unquote. At the Glendive stop, both the mayor of Miles City, Butch Grenz, as well as the mayor of Glendive were present. I like to express that, you know, when you beat up this money the first time around that we all kind of felt we've been neglected or left out or whatever and that this is kind of giving everybody a new way of hope things are going to turn around really pretty because the uh, governor felt that he had to keep his spending priorities in balance and uh, 218 became a victim of that uh, it did seem like the wheels got taken off the wagon for us but with uh, Governor Bullock's proposal and uh, the three items that he has, uh, you know, referred to as aid to the impacted counties, uh, I think that he just put the wheels back on our wagon for us, uh, particularly the Dawson County and uh, the city of Glendive. Uh, you know, he probably, with this proposal, is going to save the ratepayers in Dawson County and Glendive probably uh, 20 30 bucks a month on their water and sewer bills for the rest of their life. Mark's group caught up with the governor in Glendive, but he didn't forget about Sydney and Richland County, and he had a message for our listeners in Richland County. There are some real needs all throughout sort of our oil and gas communities, and there's a real opportunity here to come together and address some of the real infrastructure needs. And I'm excited that my staff had actually been in those city council chambers with the mayor and with the county commissioners in Richland County to say, what's the best way to go forward? I think we have a great way to go forward and looking forward to getting it done. This is the governor's presentation in Glendive. Largely wanted to come to have a discussion about, and we're announcing today, a proposal for a $45 million 
aid program to address some of the needs in our oil impacted communities. That look, and the, from the mayor, the sheriff, and others, uh, we've had long discussions about this. That you know, you're faced with challenges um, that a decade ago that local communities would have never even, you know, thought that could happen. But with the opportunities that we have, also do come some of these challenges. We've, in the last 13 months, I didn't look at just sort of state programs. We've granted about $2.8 million to programs like the Quality Schools Grant, Church State Endowment Programs, and others here in Dawson County. Um, over $4 million in Custer County. But, but at the end of the day, there's still significant needs. And I'm sure that there's been uh, challenging discussions right around this council table as I know that you're undertaking some infrastructure projects of how to meet this needs. So we put together what's called the Eastern Montana Impact and in Infrastructure Project. I think it's a reflection of our commitment. It has three real facets. First is a $45 million pot of money that will be used under what we'll call the Quick Start Program, it was last done in 2009, to immediately address the needs in the 13 counties most impacted by oil and gas development. The Tier 1 are those directly, the second, the secondary effects, and it can go all the way out to Hill County. The dollars will go to cities, towns, tribal governments, water and sewer districts. It, it will require legislative approval, though, and we'll do it through a bonding program. The second piece of this is what we can do immediately. We won't have to wait for the legislature, and that's a reduction of interest rates with the state revolving fund. So what happens is if, if you're undertaking an infrastructure project, you can get a 3% loan through the state <coughs> dollars. As of June 1st, we're going to cut that down to 1.25% over the next uh, three years. What that can allow then is that will be about $15 million across uh, the state for savings as a result of that. Then the third is uh, a rapid response. We know that uh, folks like this, folks like you, Mayor, in Glendive um, and other places that as you're seeing this exploding growth, you don't necessarily have all the staff to even deal with some of the land use planning issues some of the sort of technical assistance in getting grants um, and some of, the, some of the challenges dealing with housing as well. So call into my office then, we will help essentially coordinate and have folks both on the ground at the state level saying they're now tasked with helping out a Glendive or others with a project and we're also doing some RFPs so we can bring in some contractors as well to address some of this. Really where where we look at this is though um, a community and it's Glendive's not unique. If you look at cities, counties, school districts, and sewer and water districts, as they're trying to anticipate their needs, we have about $3.5 billion out throughout the state in local government bond. So local government says, I've got a long-term need, I need to address it. We can do a lot more at the state level doing it in the same manner. This will be a four-year program where even if, um, as some folks are further down the road than others, as you have been working on it, uh, Mayor, then that will qualify as will any of the other as we address the impact needs. I should tell you that good ideas come from listening and the head of my Department of Environmental Quality, Department of Natural Resources and Conservation, Budget Director, uh, Commerce Director, and Chief of Staff took a uh, tour, it was in February. Sat down with a lot of the leaders in local communities. And when we look at this overall three-part program, that's how that was created. It was someone that said, boy, if you could just even reduce the state revolving fund dollars, this would make a big difference for our ratepayers in our community. And boy, it was in Glendive, I think the discussion was that, you know, we need some help along the way when it comes to actually even putting together the programs, the projects, if you can do that. And the $45 million over four years 
is the recognition that there are some real significant impacts here. We can start getting a lot of this money on the ground. The projects, once it's passed by the legislature, applications would be up um, the same day that I sign it, and the expectation would be that, you know, assuming this is in the uh, next session, that money would be coming out the door into hands um, by early summer. During Governor Steve Bullock's presentation in Glendive, there was some dissent in the room. Some of that came from State Representative Alan Doan. If, if this is, if I understand you right, this is going to take legislative action to do this, why don't we just pass House Bill 218 again with your promise not to veto it? Yeah. And we could keep our own money here rather than having to send it, spend it back the second time with interest when we repay that yeah. the second time. Yeah. Well, I guess a couple things, um, Representative. For one, you know, I think by actually putting it into a quick start fund where you're now actually going to have everything and it's designed out and it's actually made by saying what are the infrastructure needs, it makes a more efficient process. Second of which, in which becomes the challenge, I mean, it's, it's uh, substantially more dollars than was in 218, but as you remember when you all left on May 6th, um, he also left 200 bills on my desk, and I had to veto $150 million of spending. So, look, that was a frustrating thing for me as well. The needs in Eastern Montana, something I talked about in my State of the State address, it's something that we had a proposal, um, and then was working for 218 as well. But ultimately, you know, we need to make sure that we're not spending more money than we have. That's the one thing that the Constitution requires. Mm -hmm. Every local government does it through more or less a bonding program for a long term. Yeah, these are long term investments. We have record low interest rates right now. Well, we also have record surplus of $550 billion. Well, we don't have, I mean, projected. Res respectfully, there's a, first, there's a big difference between a B and an M because it's $550 million. Where we walked out, after $150 million of vetoes, was an expected ending fund balance of $300 million. And structural balance, so we're not spending more than we're bringing in, after the vetoes of $1 million in a, you know, essentially about a $10 billion budget. So not a heck of a lot of room. So where we need to be looking, and it's the same that a lot of folks come with a lot of different priorities. and. We ought to be able to figure out a way that not everybody's at home and here's all these bills that either sign or spend or sign or veto. If I sign them all, um, we're going to be out of structural balance. And one thing, constitutional. And a lot of states actually have sort of a statutory instituted rainy day fund. $300 million ending fund balance, which I said even walking in, given the fact that we want to make sure, be it floods, fires, other challenges, since the legislature only meets once every two years, that's not that much money left, more or less, in the bank for a rainy day fund. So at the end of the day, I want to make sure that you know, we're managing our budget, we're managing carefully, and that we don't end up like so many other states did and end up upside down. The Main Street Montana project has become the governor's business plan for the state, which was released a few weeks ago. The full business plan for the state can be found at MainStreetMontanaProject.com. For Mark's Group Broadcasting, this is Ammonia Foils.